As we saw in the previous episode, since the arrival of our species in Madagascar, the island has lost around 80% of its original plant coverage. In just the second half of the 20th century, half of all tropical jungles have disappeared, having been turned into low-yielding crop fields. And now, when the international community is realizing the danger of irreversibly losing this unique place, where independent evolution has been developing, we do not know if there will be time to put into practice the measures to save the last Madagascan jungles and all the unique species that inhabit them. And once again, the solution is twofold. First of all, save the most threatened species, and in the medium term, ensure that conservation produces wealth for the extremely poor Madagascan people. While new technologies and international funds help the populations to develop more productive ecological harvests, a program which brings together over 30 zoological organizations from all around the world is studying and breeding the most threatened species in order to ensure their survival. The origin of the central tenet of the new conservation can be found on the other side of the world, in the British island of Jersey. It was here that work began that would revolutionize the traditional concept of zoologists. And this we owe to the enterprising work of the zoologist Gerald Durrell. Durrell managed to turn into a reality his dream of creating a zoo in which the most threatened species in the world could be bred in order to then repopulate their original habitats. But his work went much further. Jersey Zoo is simply the most visible part of the Jersey Wildlife Preservation Trust. Here, the public is made aware of the need to conserve the biodiversity of the planet. But behind the facilities and the animals of the zoo, a worldwide network of volunteers investigates species and their natural requirements, weighs up the threats to their habitats, and teaches the local populations about the value of the species that share the land with them. Quite a revolution in the field of world conservation, and one which demonstrates that old concepts and attitudes are changing, guided by new scientific investigations. Fire along the edges of the Costa Rican jungle. Fire has always been considered the worst enemy of the forest. Why, therefore, are the perpetrators happily walking around the interior of a national park like this one, Santa Rosa? New knowledge has led to new changes. This, a team of volunteers from the National Park Service of Costa Rica, sets light to the pasture and deforested areas with two intentions to instruct new volunteers in the fight against fire and to enrich the soil for a slow, gradual regeneration to the original jungle. Because we now know that fire, which can destroy entire jungles, in certain circumstances plays a revitalizing role. On the other side of the Pacific Ocean in Australia, Vast grasslands provide shelter and food to many different marsupial species. These prairies, which arose with the warming of the island on its solitary drift northwards, were periodically and in a natural way engulfed by flames. With the arrival of the Europeans, these fires were fought in the belief that they were in all cases destructive. But in recent years, scientists have started to change their opinion discovering something that the Australian Aborigines have long known. In 
In certain areas, fires revitalize the soil and the plant populations that colonize it, regenerating the carbon cycle and renewing the entire plant community. These deliberate fires are carried out under control in national parks all around the world. Scientific knowledge is proving to be a superb weapon in conservation. But this would serve for little without another vital pillar of the new conservation, raising the awareness and understanding of the local inhabitants.